I think that we are uh, together discovering uh, a very unusual and unexpected uh, path for of liberation uh, theology. Uh, initially, I thought that we will focus our attention on uh, writings of the classics like Gutierrez, Sobrino, and many others, Leonardo Boff. Uh, but uh, more we uh, are progressing in our reflection, in our debates, uh, I see that uh, what is around us uh, are drawing our, our attention more than just uh, classical texts from the past. It was like uh, this with the nuns uh, who were so revelatory for many of you that exactly not belonging uh, although believing is a very new phenomenon uh, quite globally spread and many of you uh, found uh, also uh, our your own feelings in this uh, new uh, attitude or new relationship with the institution. Uh, the same was, I think, with um, feminism or feministic theology, which uh, became not an abstract uh, uh, doctrine or theory, but very vivid uh, reality where we show that uh, this uh, new uh, approach toward also sacred text as the Bible, the Old the, the New Testament, thanks to this suspicious uh, attitude of uh, feministic uh, approaches, uh, we discover uh, something which was there as the, for example, the presence of many women in the history of uh, uh, Jews or in the history of uh, Christian uh, church, but it was simply omitted, marginalized, surprised because of the simple fact that who actually uh, wrote history, who was a protagonist of the history, who are still uh, uh, keeping uh, religious power in their hands are men. So they are not aware how uh, big damage they are doing not only to women, uh, marginalizing them, excluding them, but also to the essence, to the uh, reality of uh, religion as such. And I think uh, this intuition of Elizabeth uh, Johnson which we discussed uh, last time, uh, open our eyes to this new, a new uh, reality, more complex, more, uh, I would say, close to the reality of the Bible and the reality of, of religion. Uh, today, I would like to invite you um, to read and to reflect upon two uh, texts very different from one another, but when we look closely, we will discover how similar they are. Uh, two authors, uh, one is uh, well known, is the icon of uh, American fight for liberty, for human rights, for equality, is of course uh, Martin Luther King, everybody who started to study uh, history of America uh, notes about uh, Martin Luther King. A less known figure, uh, but also very influential and important is the um, rabbi, a Jewish thinker, uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel. And I put them together because uh, they are representing a, a very uh, interesting uh, phase of liberation theology in the United States and in the 60s. So from uh, 
uh, nuns and uh, feministic theology, we are uh, a little bit uh, turning to um, the history is 60 uh, years ago, so before most all of you were born. I remember a little bit this time, but uh, for me it's also a history. Uh, I will not spend too much time on reading uh, or reminding you facts from uh, the respective lives, biography of Martin Luther King or Abraham Joshua Heschel, just few, few facts uh, which uh, will be as an introduction to the main topic, namely I have a dream speech uh, from 1963 and an essay uh, delivered originally as a, as a lecture in 1966 uh, by uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel. So uh, uh, they were uh, from very different backgrounds, uh, African, uh, um, American uh, Martin Luther King was born in 1929 and, as you know, was assassinated in 1968, so five years after this famous uh, speech, uh, uh, I Have a Dream. Uh, Abraham Joshua Heschel was born in 1907 and uh, died in 1972. Uh, but what is uh, important that they met, they met and they uh, collaborated closely. Uh, Martin Luther King read uh, books by Heschel and Heschel read books by um, King and they inspired one another. One was uh, a Protestant pastor and another was uh, Orthodox or conservative uh, rabbi. Uh, nevertheless, uh, on the basis of their religious uh, beliefs, they found uh, many uh, elements in common uh, which drive them to do concrete actions, protests, manif they manifested, they marched together, and so on, and so on. Uh, perhaps for those of you who are not familiar with Heschel, um, just few few words about him. So he was born in Warsaw. This is uh, very important. Uh, I grew up also in, in Warsaw and uh, made all his education outside Warsaw. I mean, first years elementary school in uh, Yeshiva, the Jewish uh, school in Warsaw, in his family. It was a very traditional religious family, but after he, he made uh, higher ed, uh, education in Berlin, where he defended his uh, PhD on religious experience in 35. And because of uh, Nazi and Hitler's rise to power, he was forced, he was expelled actually from Germany, came to Poland, and was able to immigrate uh, before Second World War and was uh, so he saved his life. Unfortunately, almost entire family of Heschel was killed in the, in the Holocaust in Shoah in, uh, in Poland. Uh, but uh, thanks to his PhD, exactly, he was uh, invited uh, to teach in Cincinnati and after in New York and uh, was very involved in interreligious dialogue, particularly with Christianity. And it was the reason why they collaborated uh, together. So uh, now uh, a few words uh, about these pieces which uh, I put on the platform, but they are easily available uh, in different places in the internet, but please uh, have a close uh, look at this um, six pages, just six pages of um, a speech delivered in 1963 at uh, the March uh, on Washington. 
uh, and uh, I read it several times and for me it's, it's all the time a real pleasure to enter in, in, the, in the classical text which made history. It was uh, the impact of this speech was so huge during the march and this, I don't know how many thousands of people were gathered there but it was reproduced and you can hear it uh, and uh, this uh, performative power of these few pages is, is simply incredible. It's uh, a combination between the quotation of, from the Bible, uh, the references to uh, the history of the United States, the most noble tradition of tolerance, of equality, the Constitution, uh, but it was not uh, uh, applied to the reality. So uh, Martin Luther King reminded to his listeners, but also to his opponents, that uh, something should be done. But it, uh, the way how he approached these uh, problems was so peaceful, I would say, so full of understanding for those who are um, uh, late in understanding the urgency of, of uh, necessity to, to, to change uh, the conditions, particularly of Afro-Americans, that we are amazed uh, how come and from where he, he took this uh, spiritual power to speak in this manner. Uh, and also his own biography, he spoke about his children, about his dream to, to, to see uh, black and white together. So all this is really powerful and I uh, really invite you to, to, to taste it, to, to let it enter in you and to transform you as it was uh, uh, transforming those who listened to him uh, during uh, this short uh, performance. It was a kind of performance, a speech of, I think, 14 minutes or so. And uh, the second piece is uh, perhaps less uh, exciting uh, for those of you who are not used to theological language. Uh, but nevertheless, try. This is uh, more uh, as a lecture, almost 30 pages, uh, which was delivered by him to um, Christians. Uh, so it was also unusual. A rabbi, a, a, a Jew, is speaking to priest candidates at the Theological Union Seminar in New York in '66 when uh, this ecumenical interreligious movement started and uh, he was uh, in very similar in his ap uh, approach as Martin Luther King. So uh, the Bible, uh, the history and his own life experience, the combination is, um, is ex really an, an excellent mixture Will be which give this power of persuasion that you are not only sharing your knowledge, but you are uh, uh, in, a, in a way building bridges between people. He is not hiding differences. He said, "Well, I am a Jew. For me, uh, Jesus is of course not the Messiah. As for you, Christians." But let us not be so uh, focused on those elements which divide us, but let us uh, look for those who unite us. And those elements who, which unite us is exactly the common roots. The Judaism is the mother religion of Christianity. He is reminding to Christians that please remember from where all of your sacred texts are coming from, from us, from Jews. But in the same moment, he's saying to, to Jews, but look at this global uh, Christianity, billions of people around the world, they brought to other, to Gentiles, to 
other nations our message uh, of God who is merciful, who is loving, etc. So it's a mutual exchange of gifts. And uh, he spoke about the essence of dialogue and you know many other things. So please read it and I really uh, look for our debate in class.